Let's begin Chapter 2, Lesson 1, Solve Equations with Rational Coefficients. The last couple of days we've been talking about fractions and multiplying and dividing fractions, and the reason for that is because we need to solve equations with rational coefficients. Rational coefficients, if you think about the word rational, uh, rational includes natural, whole, integers, but it also includes fractions and decimals. So this lesson is going to uh, be solving equations with fractions and decimals. So you're going to need a highlighter and something to write with. Let's first take a look at our essential question. Because we've changed chapters, our question has also changed. The essential question is, what is equivalence? Our vocabulary for this lesson is multiplicative inverse and coefficient. And our common core state standards are 8.EE.7, 8EE.7A, and 8.EE.7B. And we'll talk about those in class. We'll also talk about the mathematical practices. So let's start on page 111 with the vocabulary startup. It says two numbers with a product of one, such as three-fourths and four-thirds, are called reciprocals or multiplicative inverses. Recall that when we divide fractions, we actually are multiplying by the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of the second fraction. So let's go through this graphic organizer about multiplicative inverses. To define it, the multiplicative inverse is um, two fractions whose product, meaning the answer to a multiplication problem, is 1. If we describe it, what we're actually doing is that um, we are changing places or the numerator and denominator switches or they switch places. For some examples, if we had two thirds the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal would be 3 over 2. We just flip it. Some non-examples, meaning something that would not be a multiplicative inverse, if I took 2 and 1 third and 7 thirds, those are not re uh, reciprocals or multiplicative inverses because if I change this mixed numeral to an improper fraction, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 thirds and 2 and 1 third are the same number. They're not reciprocals. Describe how a multiplicative inverse is used in division of fractions. Well, we went over this together in class when we were working on our uh, math sprint for multiplying and dividing fractions. When you divide fractions, You multiply the dividend by the multiplicative inverse of the divisor. possible that you have not gone through or you do not remember the words dividend and divisor. So if I had one half divided by two thirds, my dividend is one half. I'm going to divide that by the divisor, two thirds. In order to do that, I take one half and I multiply it by the multiplicative inverse of the divisor. So I flip or um, switch places with the numerator and the denominator and then I multiply straight across. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4. It does not need to be reduced and so the answer to 1 half divided by 2 thirds would be 3 fourths. 
Okay, now that we have uh, reviewed multiplicative inverses, let's go ahead and turn to page 112. All right, on page 111, we talked about the multiplicative inverse, and we're going to look at our key concept, the inverse property of multiplication. Let's go ahead and highlight our key concept. The inverse property of multiplication is the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse equals 1. So 7 eighths times 8 sevenths equals 1. 7 times 8 is 56, 8 times 7 is 56, and 56 divided by 56 is 1. Same thing with negative 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 3. When I multiply those together, I get positive 6 over 6, or 1. Now, we've talked about rational, uh, we're solving equations with rational coefficients. We discussed what rational means, and if you recall, that is the set of whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, fractions, and decimals. Coefficient is another term that we're going to need to know. So, the numerical factor of a term that contains a variable is called the coefficient of the variable. So remember we said that two numbers or uh, variables that are multiplied together, or more than two, um, are factors. So here we have 3 times x. 3 and x are factors. 3 is the coefficient. It's the numerical factor. And x is obviously the variable, which we've all already talked about. In the equation, 3 fourths c equals 18. The coefficient of c is a rational number. To solve an equation when the coefficient is a fraction, multiply each side by the multiplicative inverse of the fraction. So we'll go ahead and highlight this. This tells us exactly how we're going to solve these equations. Let's look down at the example. 3 fourths c equals 18. As we said, we're going to multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of the fraction. So the fraction the coefficient fraction is 3 fourths, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 thirds. Now remember, what you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to both sides, so I need to, for you to show me the work on both sides of the equation. When we do this, 4 thirds um, times 3 fourths is going to be 1, because remember, when you multiply a fraction by its multiplicative inverse, it equals 1. 4 thirds times 18 here we have cross simplified and if you want to cross simplify uh, that's fine that's something you should have learned in in previous years if you did not you can go ahead and multiply straight across numerator straight across denominator and then simplify it is easier to go ahead and cross simplify though 3 goes into 18 6 times 3 goes into 3 once 4 times 6 is 24 so 24 over 1 is 24. So 3 fourths C equals 18, C equals 24. You can check that by doing exactly like we've done um, with solving simple one-step and two-step equations by substituting 24 in for C and solving. Let's take a look at the problems at the bottom, A through D. We'll do a couple of them together and then I'll have you do a couple on your own. So a says 1 fifth x equals 12. We're going to use the workspace over here at the top. So A is 1 fifth times x equals 12. When we solve an equation where the coefficient is a fraction, like here, the coefficient is 1 fifth, we multiply each side by the multiplicative inverse of the fraction. So the multiplicative inverse of 1 fifth is 5 over 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my fraction, or my equation, sorry, by 5 over 1. When I multiply a fraction by its multiplicative inverse, I get 1. So we could say 1x or just plain x. If I multiply 12 times 5 over 1, 12 times 5 is 60 over 1 is 60. So the answer to um, letter A is x equals 60. So we'll put that down in the blank. And let's work uh, b together. So we'll work that over here. b 
says negative 2 ninths times d equals 4. Once again, we have a rational coefficient that is a fraction, so we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by the, the reciprocal of negative 2 ninths, or the multiplicative inverse of negative 2 ninths, which is negative 9 over 2. When I do this on this side, I multiply a fraction by its inverse or its multiplicative inverse. I get 1, so I have d equals 4 times negative 9 is negative 36 divided by, if you need to, you can put a 1 here so you know that when you multiply these fractions, you multiply the numerators and the denominator, and I simplify and get negative 18. So down on letter B, I'll write d equals negative 18. Take a few minutes and work problems C and D, and you can just use the bottom of the, the page to work C and D, and then write the answers to C and D over on the left side. When you're finished, come back and we'll move to example two. Now that you've finished examples C and D at the bottom of page 112, let's move to page 113 and look at example two. In example two, you'll notice that the coefficient as well as um, the, uh, well, let's say, let's start with the coefficient. The coefficient is a mixed numeral. So one and a half s, or one and a half times s, equals 16 and one half, which is also a mixed numeral. The easiest way to do this is to um, change your mixed numerals to improper fractions. So remember to do that, we take the denominator times the whole number or the integer, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so we get 3 over 2 times s equals 2 times 16 is 32, plus 1 is 33, so 33 over 2. So 3 over 2 times s equals 33 over 2. Now that we get to that point, then we multiply both sides of the equation by the multiplicative inverse of 3 over 2, because we need to get s by itself. And when we do that, this side becomes 1 or just at 1s or just s, and this side becomes 11. So s equals 11. Let's take a look at d. 4 and 1 sixth equals 3 and 1 third c. So we're going to change them first to improper fractions. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 1 is 25. So 25 over 6 equals 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 10 over 3 times C. At this point, we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by the multiplicative inverse of 10 thirds, which would be 3 tenths. So we'll multiply 3 tenths times 25 over 6, and 3 tenths times 10 thirds C. Once we get to this point, you can either cross simplify, which would be much easier in this case, or you can multiply 3 times 25 equals 75 over 10 times 6 equals 60, and you can solve from there. It is completely up to you. Let's go up to the top of the paper where we have some space. So we have 3 over 10 times 25 over 6 equals 3 over 10 times 10 over 3c. So if you cross simplify, you would say that 3 goes into 6 one time. So 3 goes into 3 once, or 3 goes into 6 twice, sorry. 10 and 25 had 5 in common. 5 goes into 10 twice. 5 goes into 25 five times. And then you multiply straight across. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 2 is 4 equals, remember, these become 1, so 5 fourths equals C, and I can change that to 1 and 1 fourth equals C, because 4 goes into 5 one time, with 1 left over, so 1 over 1 and 1 over 4. Also, I could have done it this way, so if you do not feel comfortable cross-simplifying, you can do it the way that you've always done it, and that is by multiplying 
and then simplifying. So I could take 3 times 25 is 75 over 10 times 6 is 60 equals C. These can both be reduced um, by 15. If I reduce them by 15, I get 5 over 4 equals C. So if I divide both by 15, 5 over 4 equals C, C equals 1 and 1 fourth. So we'll go ahead and put that answer in the blank. And I want you to take a few minutes, pause your video, and go ahead and work E and F on this page. Don't skip them. I want you to definitely try them and then we'll go back and look at them together in class. Now that you've finished examples E and F on page 113, let's take a look at example 3. This time we're solving equations with decimal coefficients. So instead of the coefficient being a fraction, we have a decimal coefficient. To solve an equation with a decimal coefficient, divide each side of the equation by the coefficient. So we solve it exactly like we've always solved simple equations, but we're talking about solving with decimals rather than integers. So if you take a look at it, it says solve 3.15 equals 0 0.45 times n. In order to do that, we know that we need to get n by itself, so we divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.45, and when you do the division, you get n equals 7. Let's look at how this happens. If you look over to the side, we're going to take a quick review on dividing decimals. So we know that the numerator goes inside the box and the denominator goes outside the box. The first thing we're going to do is move our decimal point over two places to make this a 45, and if we move this two places, we move it two places on the numerator as well. Once we've done that, then we say 45 goes into 315 seven times. Seven times 45 is 315, and that's zero. So no remainder, so um, n equals seven. Let's take a look at g down at the bottom. G says 4.9 equals 0 0.7 t. Well, I want t by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.7. 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.7 equals 1, so we just have t on this side. Now we have 4.9 divided by 0 0.7. Let's go over to the right and work that out. We'll put 4.9, or the dividend, inside and the divisor, or 0 0.7, outside. We're going to move our decimal point over one place to make this, to get rid of the decimal, so we also move it one place here. So now we have 49 divided by 7, and 7 goes into 49 7 times. 7 times 7 is 49. Subtract those and you get 0 remainder. So 4.9 divided by 0 0.7 is 7. So the answer to G, we can write over here in our box, is T equals 7. Take some time, pause your video, and work H and I. Bring your notes back to class, and we will go through them together, and we'll go through the word problem together in class rather than doing that on the video.